Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be evaluating an interesting infinite sum. So x is between negative 1 and 1 so that this converges and we're supposed to evaluate this infinite sum that goes like 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed so on and so forth where the number multiplied by the power of x is actually 1 more than the power of x. In other words we kind of have something like n times x to the power n minus 1. And this sum is taken from n equals 1 to infinity. Make sense? So in sigma notation, this is how you can write this so that you can see that this is actually a general rule for the whole thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem or how we can sum this series. I'll be presenting two methods and here's the first one. So for my first method, I'm supposed to evaluate 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. Let's expand a little bit more to get a better idea. 5x to the fourth, so on and so forth, right? That's the sum I'm trying to evaluate. So in order to evaluate this, I'm going to notice the following. 2x is x plus x. 3x squared is x squared plus x squared plus x squared. 4x cubed is x to the third plus x to the third plus x to the third plus x to the third and so on and so forth. So what is going on here? Well, every time we're getting more of these powers. As the power goes up, we do need more and more of those. That's what the coefficients indicate, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're increasing. If we had to evaluate a simpler sum, which is actually the essence of all infinite geometric series, so something like this, right? This would be fairly easy because there is a formula for values um, that do converge. Obviously, x needs to be between negative 1 and 1, not inclusive though. If x is 1 or negative 1, this is going to diverge. So, what is this sum? This sum is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And there's an interesting way to find it. Maybe we can talk about that in a separate video. So, using this sum, we're going to evaluate the top one. How do we do that? Like I said earlier, I'm going to present two methods. And the first method kind of depends on breaking this down. So notice that 2x is x plus x and this is x squared plus x squared plus x squared. So if I take one of these sums, let's expand all the way to the fourth power. You know the rest. And then start the S another sum. And this is 1 over 1 minus x the second sum at x and then continue from there what is this going to give you everything will be doubled doubled except for the first term so we're going to get x plus x which is 2x good so far so good but i do need 3x squared so i do need an additional x squared here so my next sum is going to start at x squared and then the next one is going to start at x to the third so on and so forth you get the idea so by doing all these sums, obviously, infinitely many times, and that's what's cool about math, like you can do something infinitely many times without doing it infinitely many times. All of these sums are going to be added, and we're going to be getting 1 plus 2x, x plus x, x squared plus x squared plus x squared is going to give us 3x squared, x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed is going to give us 4x cubed, and guess what? This is the sum we're looking for. Awesome. So if I can add these up, then we're going to be good. But what is the second sum? If the first sum is 1 over 1 minus x, the second sum is basically the first sum just multiplied by x. Because notice that if you multiply everything here by x, and I'm going to erase this, don't worry about it, then you're going to get the second sum. Does that make sense? Yes, because you're going to get x, x squared, x cubed. That's what we have exactly. So let's go ahead and... Multiply the first sum by x, and we're going to get the second sum. Get the idea? And this is going to be the pattern throughout because that's what we, that's what happens. So multiply the top one by x, you're going to get this. Then multiply by x again, you're going to get this. Multiply by x again, you're going to get this, and so on and so forth, right? You get the idea? Okay, something divided by 1 minus x. So now, if you put it all together, oops, that wasn't uh, the right way to do it. And then, of course, this is going to be... Uh, dot 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 so on and so forth so by adding all of these things what are you adding 
these fractions all have the same denominator, 1 minus x. So all you have to do is add the numerators. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Let's go ahead and move this a little bit to the left so we can have some room. Let's go like this. Okay, that's good. Now let's go ahead and add these numerators. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, so on and so forth. And they all have the same bottom number or same denominator, which is 1 minus x. So this is the answer. But guess what? We can simplify this further. Why? Because look at the numerator. Isn't that familiar? What? It's like, it's the first sum. Yes. So this is 1 over 1 minus x. Wow. Isn't that amazing? This expression kind of contains itself. So this is 1 over 1 minus x. We know that from the first sum right here, right? This is the first one. And we're going to have to divide it by 1 minus x. But what happens if you divide a fraction by another fraction uh, with the same denominator? Actually, I shouldn't. that wasn't the right thing to do it. Uh, these two have, are the same. That's what I'm trying to say. So that gives you the following. You're just going to multiply them because flip and multiply. And guess what? That's going to give you the answer as 1 over 1 minus x squared. And that will be the answer. This is the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. If you are familiar with calculus, you're probably going to know the second method. But let's see. So suppose this sum is s. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, dot, dot, dot. And we know that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. So s is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. What am I trying to find? Well, here's the thing. If you differentiate both sides with respect to x, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of x squared from power rule is 2x. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, dot, dot, dot. You get the idea. So my sum is the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. So I need to differentiate this expression with respect to x. How do you differentiate 1 over 1 minus x? Well, if you know the rule for 1 over u, it is negative u over u squared, negative u prime over u squared. I'm sorry about that. So you kind of differentiate the bottom and negate it and divide by u squared. So it's going to be then the derivative of 1 minus x, which is negative 1, negated positive 1, divided by 1 minus x, which is u squared. And that'll give you the answer. And what else can we do? Okay, so this is the end of the second method. Now here's a million dollar question. Is there a third one? Can you find a different way to express this using uh, a different method, right? So if you do know any other methods besides these two, uh, let's kind of quickly review. The first method basically depended upon writing all these sums and adding them together. And the second method use, uh, uses derivatives. Is there a third method? Please let me know. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.